It's the Opposition Preview. I'm your host, Phil Macbeth Seath, and today I'm joined by Ben from the W12 podcast. Thanks for joining me, Ben. How are you doing today? Feeling pretty smug after last night's win in the Cup, I'm guessing? <laughs> yes, very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I wouldn't say smug. It's like when you win on penalties, <laughs> it could go either way, can't it? But, um, you know, we, don't, we get a bit of a nosebleed. We never normally get through to the third round, so... Um, I don't think I've ever watched a third round draw. I have, obviously, but not recently. So <laughs> that would be exciting. <laughs> Win's a win. Win's a win, mate. So yeah. take take, take it for it. what it is. Uh, yeah, last last time we won a penalty shootout, it was elation. So take it for what it is. <laughs> take yeah. it what it is. We don't yeah. very often win games that way. So uh, okay. So before we tuck into the into the the bones of this um, of this preview, just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. So the podcast is sponsored by our good friends at Black Star Amplification and Carry On. Today I'm using their microphone and headphones to make sure that I sound as good as I possibly can do. Uh, We're also sponsored by The Record Shop in Amersham, who have a great range of vinyl, audio equipment and guitars. So if you're ever in Amersham, pop in and check out their wares. Okay, football. So, Ben, we just mentioned about last night. Um, How did you see the actual game? I know that we just said about the fact that you won it on penalties, but how did you see the game from QPR's perspective in the context of the the start of the season? Um... Yeah, it's been very much like the start of our season. Stop, start. We haven't really got going yet. Uh, we've, we've we've signed a fair few players, but not one of them has, have, has had championship experience before, um, which is also so eight, eight players we've signed and they've all been wow. from abroad. It's a different approach from, we've got a new board, Christian Nori, he's, he's, you know, he's like 26 and he owns a data, data company. So, um, so our approach now is completely different to how it's been. You know, we would always be the journeyman sign-ins from the yeah. championship you know been around but um, it's a different approach for us this year like I said it's all data driven a bit like the Brentford and Brighton model type thing yeah. um, so they're all so so them not having championship experience doesn't really come into the data driven kind of sign-ins it's it's value for money which the abroad market offers so we've signed the eight players and, and um, a few of them were on show yesterday but they a lot of them need to get up to speed with the championship, it's a one-off league, isn't it? And it's yeah. it's physically demanding, and you don't get much time. And so, yeah, it was a bit. If we didn't really create too much, a lot of our creative players were out uh, out out injured, or they weren't starting. I, I I was a bit. I wasn't optimistic looking at your lineup when I saw it. I thought you were going to be a bit too strong for us. We've got a couple of we had a couple of youth players playing as well. So I thought, mm-hmm. but I thought we held our own actually. I thought it was a pretty. Evenish match, very nice, wasn't it? Like, you know, not not, not too very early, very cup early season game. Yeah, um, a couple of good performances are at our end, but yeah, um, take it. And I, I imagine Friday will be a completely different game. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're probably right. I think from our perspective, it was. I'll be honest with you. I thought that we were going to make more changes. Um, I think that in a weird way, it might have been a bit of a kick up the backside from Rob Edwards to actually say to some of those players, "You need to find form and you need to find it fast," because there were far more starters that have been playing in the league there than I expected there to be. Um, and and I was concerned about the fact that we were playing too many of them and wh- whether or not they're going to have enough of a break between now and Friday. Um, but Ultimately, I think that they wanted to get the win over the line. It, it's not materialised. So um, there was also some good minutes for the likes of like Marvellous Nakamba. I don't think you'll see him on Friday, to be honest with you. Um, right. But like I say, Friday's going to be a very different ball game in, entirely, despite the fact that it's the same same two teams that are playing against each other. But uh, in terms of like the players that um, have stood out to me so far in your season, though, I know that he, he didn't get as many minutes as, as um, he would usually do, but I watched the game against Plymouth. And yep. I think that um, without trying to sort of put my own opinion on, on your team, I, I felt like it was a little bit how I felt watching Luton play Portsmouth the week before, where when they actually went down to 10, it made it a little bit harder because they <laughs> set up two sort of defensive blocks. And then you realise how you need that creativity. And I, and I think that from from an outsider looking in, it was great seeing Dembele. I thought that he was he was a fantastic player, but he didn't have as cut in as much of a cutting edge as, as perhaps yeah. Chair would have given you. And I know that he's obviously not available at the minute. But how do you see Dembele going for you? I mean, he he was sort of the kid superstar, wasn't he? From um from sort of trying to get in the Celtic team at like fourteen years old. Do you think he's going to be the next sort of Eze potentially? <laughs> oh, yeah. well, mate, what, uh, what, are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, so I mean, I tweeted something similar recently. I, it's only been th- two and a half games, but 
let me tell you, he looks a player. Um, he's exciting. He's only little, like real little. He looks about yeah. 15, 12, 12 years old. So, <laughs> but but I tell you what, he's, he's he can shift, he can move, he 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 can, he, can, he, can, he drives us forward. He's got a great set piece as well. Um, his delivery is brilliant, um, and it, it's just a, such a shame that um, we haven't been able to get our forward line all together at the same time yet. It's not going to happen Friday, but Elias Chess still out injured. Right. We've got Anderson as well. He's, he's a big player for us, sort of sits in that number 10 role. Yeah. He's out injured as well. There's rumours he might be back, but I don't think he will. Um, we've got Saito on the wing as well, who's a, who's um, who's a Japanese who, who's, who, again, needs to get going, but he looks a real player. So, yeah, I mean, we've got some, we've got the capability. And Dembe, like I said, he... he yeah, I mean, he's, he had a little cameo yesterday. He's yeah. like a good five or ten minutes. Um, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be uh, he's definitely gonna be a player to watch for Friday. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. Like, I think you said about his his, his sort of stature. He's, he's only short as a as a professional yeah, footballer. Really he's got a wonderful low center of gravity, and he just seems to breeze past players. But those set pieces as well. That's where you can sort of utilize the likes of Frey. Because I, when I saw him uh, in in the Plymouth game, he's an absolute unit, and he's he's a big old fella. So he, is, he doesn't mate, mind yeah. mixing it either. He um, so we signed him in January um, last year, like, like January this year. Sorry, uh, he's a Sifuentes played under him elsewhere, Grasshoppers, I think, can't remember exactly. But he um, so he's known to him, and he was a bit of a signing to keep us up last season. Yeah, and he's. A, and he wasn't fit because he hadn't played for the for, for two or three months. And he looked, and as well as being a big old unit size wise, he was fairly big unit wide as well. Um, <laughs> but what he did was he, he kind of held it up a little bit for the chair and yeah. Willix to, to get on the ball and the Andersons, and, and it kind of worked on some games. But he's had a really good pre season, and he's lost a bit of weight, and he looks fit. He still turns like the Titanic, but he. Um, Dykes is left today. Um, he's he's left he? for um, yeah. He's left to, to go to Birmingham, and they're very similar players. So um, yeah. So that that's faith in him that we've sort of chose to go with Dykes over him, um, and he'll play Friday. And he's a handful of set pieces. If we yeah. get the balls in the box, he, he can beat anyone in the air that I've seen. So yeah. um, it's just his movement, and it, it is not great. But he works hard, and Marty seems to Marty Sifrin seems to like that type of striker. Um, yeah, so it'd be interesting. But yeah, no, I'm, I, you know, I, he's got. I wasn't happy with him last year. I didn't think he was good enough. But he's got a bit of a second chance with a lot of, with me yeah. and quite a lot of the fan base. So um, be interesting to see how he gets on. I think it's it's one of those things where when you've got a player that plays in your own shirt and they've got a bit of spite about them, you sort of give them. Yeah. You, you're more willing to give them a second chance. I think because, like I say, seeing him in that Plymouth game mixing it up a little bit, I, I thought he looked he, he looked, looked quite good. good that so. was his best game, mate. That he's played for us for a while. I, t- I took a friend to a game a little while ago, and and he was he was really bad, and and he was laughing at like, what the hell have you got up front? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's got that in him, but um, but yeah. He, 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 it's just getting the ball in the box enough that we yeah. haven't been doing really. So I'm hoping that maybe Dembele and um, and Saito can do that. You reckon, um, you reckon Smith will play as well on Friday? Because oh, Smith... again, he's another one. He um, he's tr- he's getting the opportunity because we've got the players out injured, and he's been okay. He's been good. He's yeah. quick. Um, he's yeah. like me actually. Um, he, he's very. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is no disrespect to him. Well, it kind of sounds it, but he's a bit hes a bit of a poor man's Dan James, if that makes sense. Like, he's yeah, yeah, I get that. Quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. He just hasn't got the end product that Dan James has got. Uh, Leeds fans would probably say that he hasn't got an end product. But, um, but yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Not after last could... week, they won't, Ben. Don't worry. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Smith could do that. I get, there's no way in a million years he'd do that. Right? Did get over the keeper. But yeah. yeah, he'll be. I suspect it will be Saito, him, and Dembele behind Frey. Imagine that would be the okay the, the four we go with. So what we were talking about, Ben, was as well the fact that um, your formation might be quite difficult for us in a weird way because we are lost a couple of players in the last literally since we played you last night. Uh, there's very very strong rumours that Ted and Mengi, who wasn't in the squad last night, I have to admit, but there's very very strong rumours that arguably our best centre back is is off to Torino has been touted. He's also been touted for Wolves, but we're not sure. Uh, where he's going to end up, but the reality of it is that he might not be available on Friday. And we also lost Og Bene, who wasn't in the squad, but was hoping to bring him back in and cause cause real problems because he's he's pacey and he he could uh, really get at 
defenses. So it's um it's going to be a really interesting one because, like I say, um, defensive wise, we've not been superb. We've got Mark McGuinness in, um, who I think will be the guy that's sort of tasked with um with trying to trying to battle Frey. Um, but what what's it looking like from from your side? So you obviously made a lot of ch- you actually made more changes than Luton did last night. So do you think that there's going to be significant changes tomorrow? You, you mentioned that back, that front four. Will Field come back in as well in the yeah. centre? Or yeah, Field will put the centre midfield would probably change. We bring Field in a Marsden. He came on at the end. He's a Danish um, number eight, if you like. We brought him at uh, the end of last week, so he played against Plymouth, but he only signed the Friday. Um, he, he scored a fair few goals in Belgium. He's a big lad. He, he, he'll play, I think, with Field, possibly Colback, but ugh, Colback's mm-hmm. a bit of a liability. Um, and yeah, and it will just that the thing that probably won't change too much is the back four. We'll have Cook and Clark Salter at centre back. They sort of did forty five minutes each yep. yesterday, um, and then it will be Jimmy Dunn right back. Um, it'll be Kenneth Powell left back and then it'll, the, the keeper will change that keeper. It will, we've got Nardi who's a French keeper. So, yeah. um, so, so yeah, I mean, there'll be a fair few changes, but, but, uh, probably about five or six, I'd imagine. Okay. Yeah. That'd, well, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be interesting. Adib- Adibayu looked good. He looked injured at the end. I don't know if he is injured. Yeah, we haven't heard we haven't heard anything. <laughs> we, we we haven't heard anything about about him. It's been it's been a bit of a sort of flatter to deceive start of the season for both him and Morris. I think they're still trying to figure out how to play with each other in this sort of system that we're playing. I mean, we changed things up a little bit yesterday. We we at times we played a four at the back. At times we played a three yeah. slash five at the back. Um, and there was a time, there was a period last season where Morris was playing slightly wider, and Adebayo was the sort of main man in the centre up front, and it really worked. But this season, it just doesn't seem to have clicked. Um, and I think that we we're quite quite easy to know what's going to happen. We'll get the ball out to wide to the likes of Doughty and try and swing the ball in, but. Um, it's not quite what clicked yet, so we'll see what, what's going on. I mean, I, I reckon that you'll see the likes of Baptiste come back into the starting lineup. Clark might play tomorrow night as well, and we've made a new sign in um, a German fella called Kraus, and uh, we're not sure if he's ready yet. We, we reckon he's probably about another seven to ten days away. So I'd be amazed if he if he um, starts. But like I said, we started a lot of the players last night that I would expect to start on Friday. So um, it'll only really be that back line that um, that swaps about so much. So um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting one, um, that's for sure. But in terms of the in terms of QPR though, going back to back to yourselves, Ben, um, what are your sort of sort of, sort of um, hopes and hopes for the season then? Because obviously Sifuentes has, has he got a little bit of a trial run, didn't he, at the end of end of last season to to sort of get up to speed with it a little bit and is it a case of trying to like be in one of those teams that's got an outside shout at the playoffs is it a case of stabilizing looking lower mid table or what, what's what's i'm not i'm tr- not trying not to put words in your mouth but what are you, no, what are you no, thinking no. from a qpr's yeah. point of view uh, yeah i mean marty did a great job last season in keeping us up because we were all but go- gone under gareth ainsworth he absolutely killed us <laughs> in no oh, um, he's useless yeah no oh he um you know <laughs> Club we, legend we were, or not, I, no. <laughs> yeah he, 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 and that's the only thing that kept him in the job till november and yeah, he's lucky is. to get that long um because we were waiting for marty until the end of the scandinavian season finishes it finishes in like november so we right. were waiting until that finishes and we got in the last before the last game of the season there we just had to get him in so we've got him yeah. in he did a really good job really really good job um this summer was always going to be his summer to do what he needed to do and make the changes he wanted to change uh, last season it was a bit um he was doing things that he probably didn't want to do he quickly realized that he couldn't play the way he wanted to play with the players we had so he changed it all and he's yeah and then so this summer we've brought in the players that he wants we've got out we've got rid of a fair few um, really like a lot of the dead wood is gone. Um, we've lost Chris Willock as well, which was which was a little. Sinclair Armstrong's gone to Bristol City. He was a young talent that we had. Mm-hmm. Dykes is gone. Um, so yeah, we've we, we've we've we've, had, we've we've shifted a few out. Dazel. Um but it's difficult, mate, because I don't know. It, I don't know how. I think that maybe one or two will still come in before the end of the window. I hope. Maybe um, mm-hmm. so. Once everyone gets going and gets up to speed, and we know where we are, I'll be. It's difficult. As, as long as we're not in a relegation battle, that'll be. I can't deal with another another season of a. 
yeah, uh, dealing yeah. with relegation and looking over your shoulder at results and stuff like that. So I think we'll be, I think we'll be um, mid table. I think yeah. happy with that. It shows yeah. shows growth and development for ne- and the next season we can proper give it a go. But you just never know in this league, do you? You put like a, a, a no, few results sure. together and, and you're right up there. So um, I mean, see, we need to win a game first. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I amen. <laughs> I know exactly what you feel like with that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it's it's one of those things where it, it at least you're sort of building an identity and you're, you're sort of realising that you can't keep going the way you've been going. Um, I think that you said earlier on about the, the sort of having that Brentford model and based on sort of data and things like that, that'll take, that'll take a season or two to bed in. But once it's there, yeah. then like I say, you can do what we're all doing and sort of like yearning to get back up to the Premier League. And it's, it's one of those ones you, you guys have been up there a few times, but um, I'm going to sound like a bitter fan here, but like last, last year I loved going to all the stadiums, but the culture of Premier League football is so, so different. And I'd take championship level football any day of the week in terms of like the people that you meet in terms of the stadiums, in terms of the banter between fans, the fact there's no VAR. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, right. not, it's not all yeah. doom and gloom being mid table in the championship, you know? <laughs> so. No, no, but you, when you're mid-table, you're so close to relegation. That's the problem. Do you know what I mean? You're yeah. only, again, the opposite. You're only a two or three defeats away from getting dragged in. And once you get dragged in, you know, it feels like it could just take anyone down. You know, some big it's teams horrible. have gone down, haven't they, over the years? So, yeah, um, yeah try to avoid yeah, that. The relegation word, has n- it, it's not out of my um, vocabulary at the minute. It's the, It's been that bad of a start of a season <laughs> that, that we're also sort of worried about. The, I have genuinely said about worrying about the double drop you know so um yeah well, it, this sure league is just me. brutal so fingers crossed fingers crossed but anyway yeah. ben if it's okay i'm going to ask you to um give me a few predictions um sure. for six fixtures um across the course of this weekend so what we're doing is we're doing a uh, predictor league called the sluga six um and the opposition podcast i get uh one of you guys to speak to us every single week uh last week it was ollie hargreaves from the butter pie podcast for preston um and he actually did the best in terms of point scoring the opposition podcast they're playing for a donation towards the luton town food or the luton food bank um so um as best as you possibly can um try and take it seriously <laughs> no 10 nils to keep <laughs> yeah definitely yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but um the first one we'll start off with if that's okay is, is the luton qpr game so how do you see it going so i've done one all okay and i'll yep. and that's well, the, we do that's uh that the double points by the way just so you're aware for the uh for the for the luton game so um uh, if it's okay. a draw then you'll be getting double points so yeah, um, one all i'm gonna call me yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I, I'm not happy with that, but we'll go, <laughs> we'll go with that on your behalf. Um, so next one is uh, Coventry against Norwich. Um, I'm going to go 2-0 Coventry. I think Norwich have lost a lot of players, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. And Coventry at home are pretty pretty decent, yeah. aren't they? Let's face it. So Good Speaking of line. decent teams at home, uh, the next one is Leeds versus Hull. Uh, I'm going to go 3-1. To Leeds, three one, um, and then we've got Millwall versus Wednesday. I am going to go nil nil, nil nil. It'll be interesting if at Millwall, after scoring all those goals, they get no points, and then they get two nil nils in a row and get points on the board. Uh, so <laughs> then we've got Plymouth versus Stoke. Plymouth weren't bad against us, but Stoke are decent, aren't they? 5 0 they won, didn't they, yeah. yesterday? Um, I'm going to go 3 2 to Stoke. Nice. Lots of goals in that one then. And yeah. then the last one is West Brom versus Swansea. 2 0 West Brom. Yeah. West Brom have been decent, haven't they, I think? Um, yeah. So, We're good uh, against us on the so opening yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll be good. They'll be good. So. Ben, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining us this week. Um, no I, I, like I say, I wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season, obviously after Friday. Um, and uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll get to speak to you when we uh, when we meet back at Loftus Road in 2025. Just before I leave, if you uh, want to give a nod to um, to to your followers um, and potentially um, share your share your tags and handles and everything like that for the Luton fans okay. that will listen to this. Yeah, sure. It's just WTR podcast, um, QPR podcast, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So on all socials and wherever you get your podcasts. For QPR fans, we've had um, Marty Sifuentes on. We've had Harry Redknapp, Neil Warnock. So we've, there's lots of content there to listen to. Um, and we're doing our podcast tonight. So, yeah. 
Lovely. So well, you've got some serious pull then if you're getting those names in. Perfect. Cheers <laughs> for that, Ben. Yeah. And uh, just no before worries. we go, just another <laughs> another nod to the sponsors, um, Black Star Amplification and Carry On for our sound equipment and the record shop in Amazon. But for now, it's bye from me and bye from Ben. Uh, take care and uh, come on you at us on Friday.